Hi, this is Mr. Adams from Midwood High School, and uh, this is a review for writing on a compound formulas using the stock system. Um, we previously had done writing on naming um, on a compounds without the stock system, so please um, review that before we get into this phase of the matter. Okay, um, to my left on the slide, um, we first have to determine whether the, the compound is binary or ternary. That's essential, folks. Okay. Because moving just to number two, if it's ternary, you have to go to table E. All right, all the formulas and names are listed there for you on table E, and there's no um, ambiguity with it. If you find yourself making up a crazy name, something's wrong, okay, you stop, you say, okay, maybe this thing's on table E, I should find it there, okay? And then the third step is simply says do the crisscross, and in terms of numbers, and put them to subscripts. Now, I'm trying to emphasize numbers only, guys, okay, because I've noticed that people have been crisscrossing, they've been putting the charges, the sign, the negative two, down as a subscript, and that'll get you um, no points. So we just want to make sure that we're on the same page with this topic here. Okay, moving on. Um, for example, the, one of the quizzes, one of the versions, had um, manganese 4 oxide, and it required you to write the formula. Now, a bit of background. Manganese Atomic number 25 on your periodic tables. You should have your periodic tables out. Okay, atomic number 25 has multiple oxidation states. Okay, and if something has multiple oxidation states, you have to tell the person which particular oxidation state it's in. All right, and that's why we use the Roman numerals. Now, I noticed um, in terms of Roman numerals that um, some folks didn't weren't quite sure which one was which. Um, I saw I as being 1, I seen I, I as being 2, I, I, I being 3, and I also saw I, 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 I as being 4, which is, you know, incorrect. So we need to memorize these guys that are in the bottom left corner here. Make sure we know at least 1 through 10, so we don't run into any problems there. Now, as a comparison, something like calcium, guys, which is atomic number 20, if you look at it, it only has one oxidation number, which is plus two. It has two valence electrons, okay? And when it loses those two valence electrons, okay, its configuration now becomes that of argon, okay? We all know argon is a, yes, noble gas, and we also know that noble gases are very, very stable, okay? All right, and one more thing before we do this example, guys, is that you had to use table S with your periodic table. If you don't know the name of a particular element, you don't panic, you find the atomic number, you go to table S, you scroll down from the top with your finger, you find that element, you find its name. And on the flip side of that, if you don't know a symbol, you find the atomic number with the name, you go to your um, periodic table, and you find it there. So table use table S in conjunction with your periodic table. Don't have don't find yourself or have yourself making up names for things. Okay, they're all there on your reference table. The reference table is a tool to help you use it. Okay, so we have manganese. Now manganese can form multiple um, compounds based on its different oxidation states. And as, as we said before, we want to be specific. All right. So manganese symbol is M. N. Okay? Now I noticed in terms of manganese, people were putting Mg as manganese, and once again, that's a that's not a good mistake because that'll get you no points. Okay. So manganese Mn, alright, and the IV, which is here, okay, IV represents the four plus oxidation state. So we just put that as a superscript up here, four plus. Alright. The Roman numeral people is always, always, always four the first element in the in the formula okay nothing that's always for the positive ion so this guy the Roman numeral four is always for the positive substance no matter what it is okay now oxide refers to as we know from experience oxygen so you write that down someplace oxygen and you look on your reference table and for the most part 99 percent of the time oxygen will have a two minus oxidation state or two minus charge Okay, our next step is then to crisscross. So just the number, guys, just the four goes to the subscript of oxygen, and just the two goes to the subscript of the manganese. 
All right. This in turn will give us M N two O four. Okay, so we're basically almost done. Now we ask ourselves a simple question: Are we allowed to reduce this? Okay, and the answer so happens to be yes, because we have M N, a monoatomic ion, combining with O, another monoatomic ion. So this is a binary compound here. Okay, so we can reduce the two and the four, and simply get M N O two as our final answer, and you're done. Okay, so that's how we wrote the formula from this given name right here. Okay, alrighty, we're moving on to the next step. Okay, where we have another compound, nickel three carbonate. Okay, now guys, anytime you have anything ending in eight or eight, please automatically go to table E. Okay, don't 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 surmise, don't think about it, don't just go to table E. It's ending in eight or eight. You'll find it on table E. Okay, and also another word of warning, use table E carefully, okay, because there's some guys like here, okay, they look very similar, there's just um, one difference in terms of the oxygens, in terms of each other, you want to be careful that you select the right one, so when you choose your polyatomic ion, choose it with care, you want to get the right amount of elements, the right subscripts, and the right name, okay, so nickel has formula Ni, as seen on your periodic table, the three, once again, represents what? Okay, yes, the oxidation state of the nickel that it's in. Okay, which is three plus. Now, carbon eight, eight ending. Okay, you look on your um, table E. Okay, carbonate just so happens to be over here. All right, so CO3, two minus. You write it down. CO3, two minus. Okay, our next, our next step is to do... Um, the crisscross, which is 2 going to the nickel, and the 3 going towards the carbonate subscript. Sub okay, now we discussed in class that if you have a polyatomic ion, as in carbonate or something else, and you have a number that's 2 or higher coming down to the subscript, you must, must, must put a what? You must put a parentheses around the polyatomic ion. So, we will put nickel, 2, CO3, parentheses, 3. Okay? Now, that's our final answer. We're done. All right? Nickel, 3, carbonate. Um, if you have the idea that you can do this and reduce these guys, please get rid of that idea. We also discussed it in class that any part of the polyatomic ion, for example, CO3, it arrived that way, you don't want to change anything about it. Let it be that way, okay? You cannot change anything about the polyatomic ion. So the final answer is Ni2, CO3, parentheses, 3 on the outside, okay? All right. All right. Now, I have two examples here. Okay, cobalt two sulfide and vanadium five sulfate. Now, what I want you to do is pause this um this this presentation. I want you to practice them on a piece of scrap paper, and um, before you look at the this a solution to them. Okay. Once again, ask yourself: Is it a binary compound or a ternary compound? If it's ternary, I look on table E. I do my crisscross. I must know which my um what my um Roman numerals represent. Okay? And I cannot change anything about the polyatomic ion in my formula. Okay? So we'll go from there. Alright. Okay. Cobalt is C O. Now be very, very careful with cobalt. Because I noticed a number of folks um, put cobalt as carbon monoxide, or um, they, you know, they, they give it some some other name other than what it is. Okay, so it's capital C, lowercase O, not a capital C and a capital O. Okay, so be very careful how you write that. 
Um, the two, once again, represents the oxidation state of the cobalt, which is two plus. Okay, sulfide, okay, is S, referring to sulfur. Okay, remember, binary things have IDE endings. You gotta be careful because there's a few IDE endings on the table E, but if you look at it carefully, you'll see it, so you shouldn't be um, confused with that. Um, S is two minus. You do a crisscross for that, okay? But you get C O two S two, okay? And the next question you ask yourself is, can you reduce those twos? And you absolutely can. So your final answer would be C O S, okay? Alrighty. And the last one, vanadium V sulfate or vanadium five sulfate because V stands for five. Vanadium just so happens to have the chemical symbol V. Okay, so you put a plus five up here, okay, to represent that, because remember again, the Roman numeral always represents the oxidation state of the of the positive ion that's in front. Sulf eight, ending in eight, you look on table E, you'll see that it's S O four two minus. You do your crisscross. And your final answer should be V2, because the 2 from here goes here, alrighty? And this 5 goes to the subscript over here. Remember, you don't change anything about the sulfate, so you put SO4, parentheses, 5, okay? And that's your final answer. I hope this was helpful. And my motto, one of my many mottos is hard work plus sacrifice equals success. Please study, guys. And that's the only way we'll get better. And that's the only way we'll get smarter. All right, take care. I'll have more videos to come.